Hello everyone, my name is Brisa Marie and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything grad life, grad advice, and research. In today's video, we are going to discuss the most important part of becoming a graduate student and that's picking the best graduate program for you. And while you can do a Google search and find sources like the Princeton Review and their list on how to pick a grad program, these lists don't necessarily tell you how to do these steps or what are the most important things to consider when you are searching for a graduate program. So if you're interested in learning about the details and specific strategies to picking the perfect graduate program for you, then keep watching. So the first thing you want to do is make a list. And in this list, you should be exploring what is it that you like? What is it that you like to study? Is there a specific region or country that you would like to learn more about? Are there languages that you speak already or would like to learn how to speak? What are your career goals and aspirations? Where would you like to live? And generally, what do you want to know more about? And when you're writing this list, allow it to be a brainstorm. Don't overthink it. Just allow what comes to your mind to make it to the paper. By doing this list and writing down the things that matter most to you, you can notice what are your priorities and what are the things that you care most about. It's also really important that you don't just focus on disciplines or departments that you're familiar with. In grad school, you can study almost anything in any department. So in this process of making a list, try to stay true to yourself and really focus on what is it that you care about. What is it that you want to learn more about? And what are the things that are most important to you? So now you can see my list. And I didn't write it in any specific order. I just kind of took what came to mind and threw it on paper. And now I'm going to go through and look at my list and circle things that are related in some way. So at the top, you can see I have words like blackness, Latinidad, and culture. And I'm circling these in blue because I think these words are really related to ideas of identity, and culture words. But I also have words like Spanish, Mexico, Latin America, African diaspora, and those words seem really regional. And I will circle these regional words in green. There's a lot of art words. There's art makers, museums, UNESCO, art NGO. And so I'm gonna circle those in red. So these clusters of words really highlight the most important things to me. And that's Latin American identity, black identity, and art. So now we have our list and our top priorities. So the next thing we need to do is to think, how do you like to study? And this is really important because graduate school is a really big commitment. It takes years to do, takes years to finish, and writing the dissertation takes a really long time too. So you want this process to be really enjoyable for you. For example, I really don't love reading. And it's not to say that I will never read in my graduate program, that's really unrealistic. But it is saying that I would prefer to do research that included visual art. And visual art requires a visual analysis. So for you, you need to really think deeply and self-reflect. Do you like reading newspapers and magazines and journals and old diaries? Or do you prefer watching film and TV shows and movies and videos on TikTok? Or maybe you are doing something completely different and are really interested in how people speak to one another and body language and syntax and voice recognition. These ways of understanding the world can be applied to any research question, but they all require specific methods and methodologies to be able to implement that type of research and data collection. And so you want a graduate program that would encourage you to do the research the way you would like to. So what we're gonna do first is our Google search with our keywords so I'm looking at graduate programs with race and art and immediately you see the results and you start to take other keywords that are relevant to you so I'm gonna think about culture words like ethnic studies the word culture really seem to excite me so I'm gonna keep that in the back of my mind so when I need to repeat this process and look for other graduate programs I have other keywords that are relevant to my original search but for now, I'm gonna randomly pick this program, which is actually American Studies. 
which is why I was emphasizing not to focus on a department or a discipline because American Studies wasn't anything that I had considered before, but this program is American Studies. So if I would have focused on a discipline, I probably wouldn't have selected American Studies. So now I'm going to scroll through the overview and some of these words get me excited like cultural studies and that was on my list. Also I'm noticing they have museums and government services included in their overview which was really relevant in my list because those were the career goals that I wrote and specifically I talked about UNESCO museums and curation. So already I feel like this program is really actually kind of catered to me. So I'm going to scroll down to student learning outcomes and I see that they talk about the Americas more broadly which means that it probably would include Latin American countries like Mexico and Brazil. And it includes visual analysis. So actually this program seems almost too good to be true. So I'm gonna add it to a database or a spreadsheet that I keep on Google Drives. And this spreadsheet should have the program name, what university it is or its location, the department that it's housed in, and any pros and cons. And I'm just gonna fill this out based off of this program. And this is really helpful when you need to go back and whittle down your top programs. All the programs that you've done research on are going to be in one space and will have a bunch of details that help you make the hard decision on which ones will be your top schools. And ways to really make sure that that's an easy process is by thoroughly filling out the pros and cons section. And so for me in this program, I'm really interested in the fact that it's culture focused and that it allows visual analysis and that even though it's American studies, it includes Americas more broadly, so it would also encompass Latin America. And another really important thing to consider when looking for the best graduate program for you is to look at if there are faculty or graduate students doing similar research as you. And so even if the overview seems to match everything you love, if there's no faculty or graduate students, then it may not be a good enough fit. And I talk about how important fit is in my previous video on how to get into any graduate program. But in general, if you don't fit the program's mentorship and resources, you won't really be able to develop a strong research project. So I'm scrolling through the faculty, reading some of their bios, and I see some keywords like Afrofuturism and Latinx fiction, which might be relevant to me, but probably not. And then I also see African American literature and black masculinity, race and commodity culture, which isn't actually related to me at all. So I can deduce that there aren't any faculty that are going to be relevant to my research project. Then it'll be helpful to repeat this step with PhD or graduate students listed on the website. And this process is guess and check. You click on everybody's name, skim through their bios, see if you see any keywords that interest you. I personally, looking through this website, can kind of tell that there aren't any graduate students that are relevant to me. So I'm also gonna add that in the cons. Something else you'll want to include are just important notes. So these are other things that are really important to the grads program that would immediately impact your decision. So I'm thinking immediately funding packages. Can you afford to go there? Do they fund their graduate students? But also things to consider would be any special initiatives that could be helpful to your project. What is the timeline of the program? What are the language requirements? As well as any qualifications that you would want to improve to be more competitive in the application. It's also important to include the deadline to the application and a link to the website or the application so when you come back later it's all in one place and really easy to find. So once your spreadsheet has about 20 schools that interest you then the next step is to whittle it down to your top five. And the way you're going to do that is again, going back through your pros and your cons, looking at where they're located, what is it that really excites you, the costs, and organizing them from your top school that might be your dream school to maybe your not so top school that you may not even apply to in the end. Then once you've solidified your top five graduate programs, then the next step is to actually apply. So if you want to learn more on how to get into any graduate program, you should check out my last video where I talk about how to get into any graduate program, but I also invite some friends from UCLA to talk about what made them competitive and advice they would give to anybody applying to their programs. So if there are any questions that I didn't answer in this video, please leave them in the comments below so I can make sure I include them in future videos. 
And if you found at least two things valuable from this video, please hit the thumbs up so people know that there are some real gems. And if you're interested in exploring grad life, hearing more grad advice, and everything research, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.